The Donald Trump Organization has announced it is opening up a new Trump Tower inside the head of the editor of The New York Times. A spokesman for the Trump Organization said Donald Trump already owned the real estate in the editor's head, and while the space was narrow there, there was still plenty of room in it since there seemed to be nothing else in there besides thoughts of Donald Trump. Early blueprints of the tower show that the foundation will be laid in the seething froth of hysterical bias located at the base of the editor's brainstem, and the tower should rise unimpeded through the top of the editor's head since the top of his head exploded directly after Trump won the election. Times editor Blithering Prevarication III said he welcomed the construction of the new Trump Tower inside his head since it would give him a place to neatly store all the Blithering Prevarication Trump headlines that are now littering the front page of the former newspaper itself. These headlines include, Some say many feel sources report experts pick Donald Trump as worst president ever. Celebrity stylists say Trump's hair reveals ties to fascism. Observers wonder why they never see Donald Trump and Steve Bannon at the same time. And why stupid Americans stupidly voted for stupid Donald Trump because they're so stupid. At a joint press conference Mr. Prevarication held with his psychiatrist, the editor of the former newspaper addressed an empty room full of imaginary reporters saying, quote, Many people say I have become obsessed with Donald Trump and that I think every news story should be about Trump and that I even think Trump is hacking my dreams and broadcasting Trump thoughts directly into my Trump head through the Trump fillings in my Trump teeth. Trump, 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 unquote. Mr. Prevarication went on to assure the reporters these accusations are entirely un-Trump. A spokesman for the Trump Organization said the new Trump Tower inside the editor's head would include some never-before-seen innovations, like a gigantic photograph of Donald Trump's face on every wall, a recording of Trump's inaugural address playing at full volume on a loop in every room, and, of course, large gold letters spelling Trump to be used instead of furniture and fixtures. The spokesman said this decor was meant to blend in with the decor that was already in the Times editor's head, so they would not cause much of a change. To commemorate the construction of the new tower, the New York Times issued a special edition with the headline, Trump to build new Trump Tower, Trump, 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 Trump. The entire article consisted of Trump's name written again and again. After writing the article, the Times editor chased his wife through the house with an ax, shouting, here's Johnny, before returning to live in the Trump Tower inside his head, where he will continue to edit new editions of the New York Trump. Trump, Trump. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky-dunky, life is tickety-boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo Ship-shaped, ipsy-topsy, the world is a bitty zing It's a wonderful day, hurrah, hooray, it makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray. Oh, hooray, hurrah. Hooray, hooray, it's Tuesday, and you know that what that means. You are one day away from having all your problems solved if you send your questions into the mailbag. Tomorrow is mailbag day. If you are a subscriber to thedailywire.com, you can send in your questions. We will answer them. The answers are guaranteed 100% correct and will change your life sometimes for the better. So get in your questions now, and we will answer them tomorrow. And if you haven't subscribed this, if you haven't subscribed, look at yourself. This is why your life is the way it is. I mean, this is it. You know, look in the mirror. It's just like, oh, now I get it. It's because I don't subscribe to The Daily Wire. All right, some news coming down the pike. Even as we go on the air, Betsy DeVos was just uh, confirmed as education secretary. This is excellent, excellent news. A couple of silly Republicans uh, ducking out because I guess they were afraid of the teachers' unions, but Mike Pence broke the tie. That is a first in history that a cabinet member was uh, needed the vice president to break the tie. Someone on TV last night called it very unique, which you will never hear anyone in this room ever say and survive because if unique means one of a kind, so you can't be very one of a kind. You can only be unique or not unique. Um, but anyway, Betsy DeVos, these are, these are important. These are the things we talk about here. This is Betsy DeVos. There was a piece, I think it was in the Washington Post, commemorating Ronald Reagan's 106th birthday, which was yesterday, comparing Donald Trump to Ronald Reagan, which normally would not be even interesting except for the brilliant guy who was writing the article 
and for the fact that he has been right about everything. So we're going to get to that later on in the show. First, let's just cover some of the news, of course. Trump's order to temporarily ban refugees and to uh, ban people coming in from seven countries that the Obama administration deemed as dangerous so they can check on their vetting procedures. That has been uh, suspended by a Seattle judge, James Robart, because he said, <laughs> kind of ridiculously, he said uh, that it was bound to be overturned. So I'm suspending it, which is he's actually allowed to do that, like if he thinks is a likely case that it will be suspended. But why he thinks that, nobody knows. And whether he actually, whether a Seattle judge actually has the right to do that, I'm not sure. Donald Trump, of course, responded with a tweet calling him a so-called judge. And the hearts of the media broke in twain for the feelings of this judge. you got to watch this. This is incredible. George Snuffleupagus, former Democrat hack, currently a Democrat hack, portraying a journalist on TV, says to Mike Pence, like, aren't you, aren't you concerned? Listen to the, the lovelorn voice of this guy. Is it right for the president to say so-called judge? Doesn't that undermine the separation of powers in the Constitution written right next door? Well... I I, I don't think it does. I think the American people are very accustomed to this president speaking his mind and speaking very straight with him. And it's very frustrating when, when scholars on the left and the right, people as distinguished as Jonathan Turley of George Washington University, have said while he doesn't agree with the executive order, he recognizes the president has the full authority to put the security of the homeland first in determining who comes into right, this, this country. Judge but to see appointed. a judge actually suspend that order across but, the country, so George, is frustrating judge. all of us. This is a judge who was nominated by President Bush, 99 to nothing, confirmed. How is he a so-called judge? Well, again, there's, there's simply no question under the Constitution and, frankly, under federal law that the president of the United States has the authority in the interest of national security to determine who has the right to come into this country. <laughs> I'm reading really like Mike Pence and Sean Spencer have the hardest jobs in the country right now. It's like in the, the, the Trump whispers, the guys who tell you what Trump really meant when he said something. <laughs> but I just love, I love the bleeding sadness of George Snuffleupagus as he like says, oh, like, you know, isn't it, what about the separation of power? I mean, it does my heart good to see left-wing hacks suddenly worried about the separation of powers. Where were they for eight years? They didn't matter. But it's great. I mean, it's terrific. We should, we should have had Trump in there a long time ago. Here's Andrew Napolitano, the uh, legal authority at Fox News, good guy, uh, talking about just the fact that Trump does absolutely have the right to do what he did. Whether you think this is wise or not, whether you think it's disruptive or not, whether you think it's fair to stop uh, everybody, including people with hardship cases, in order to keep a few bad people out, that is a decision for the president of the United States and the president of the United States only. The statute, co correct. The statute couldn't be clearer. It's a 1952 statute that expressly says the president of the United States on his own may suspend the immigration of any person, class or group of people for public health, mm -hmm. public safety or national security. End so of the story. Clear. <laughs> so, so, you know, I just want to remind you, you know, the thing is, we we have to find we have to find our way here because it's so frustrating and so frustrating the level of hysteria and I'm going to get back to that in a minute the level of hysteria with which he's being Trump is being covered that there is this tendency to say well you never did this with Obama you never did this with Obama without judging Trump on its own, what he says on its own merits I mean here let just to remind you here is Obama at the State of the Union hurling what is an absolute untruth into the faces of the Supreme Court. They had just uh, done this, uh, the, uh, you know, the case that, um, oh my gosh, I forgot the, uh, the one that Hillary Clinton was always yelling about, where they said that a, a corporation retains its rights to free speech. And this drove, this drove the left crazy, and they've been trying to destroy it ever since. And he hurls it back. They're sitting there, and he hurls it back in their face. Now listen to this. With all due deference to separation of powers, last week the Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests, including foreign corporations, to spend without limit in our elections. So, so you can see Alito sitting there shaking his head going, what the hell is he talking about? I just reverse any law. I mean, they basically just said, as I've explained, to, I've explained this to left wingers again and again, all they said was that if you form a corporation, you don't lose your rights to free speech. So, you know, the, the, this, that 
clear, clear attempt to intimidate the Supreme Court from the bully pulpit of the presidency went virtually without notice in the mainstream media. You didn't see snuffle up against crying then. I mean, that's only now that the guy is suddenly, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, he called him a so-called judge, you know. I mean, if you think, if you think that Trump has not made the left hysterical. I've got, I've got a couple of cuts to play you that are just hilarious. I mean, what is happening now is that demonstrators have gathered outside Chuck Schumer's house, right, top Democrat in the Senate. They've gathered outside his house, and they're screaming, you know, de- de- resistance, resistance. Again. And, and they have these four-letter words and all this stuff. So these guys are waking up every day, looking out their window and seeing these people who are telling them, uh, you know, you have to resist everything Donald Trump does. And meanwhile, there are Republicans who now have to go out in the next midterm election and have to go out to these Republican states that voted for Trump by well over 55 percent and run for office. So if, they, if there's nothing but hysterical, hysterical resistance, you, you know, they're going to lose their they're going to lose their seats. If you don't think that Donald Trump has built his latest Trump Tower inside the Democrats' head. Listen to Nancy Pelosi talk about the fact that she can't support anything he does. Listen carefully to what she says. This, while it's only a couple of weeks since the inauguration, there's complete evidence, there's practically, we've seen nothing that we can work, that I can work with President Bush on, and I'm disappointed because I thought that there might be some interest because of what he said in the campaign, which turns out to be not true, a hoax, and really dangerous to the economic stability of America's working families. President Bush? <laughs> President Bush? What? what? <laughs> Hello? You know? Hey, Granny, you know, I think you forgot what administration we're in. They are so hysterical. She can't even remember the name of the president. You can see Maxine Waters standing in back of her with, give this look to the guy. Uh, I think that's not this president anymore. Is, it, is that the, still the president? I'm not sure. <laughs> Just completely hysterical. And it is here. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. Here is Katie Tour. Now, we're going to get back to this idea idea of of the Russians and all this stuff. But Katie Tour reacts to on she's on MSNBC. And this is her reaction to Trump's statement that, you know, uh, O'Reilly asked him if he respected Putin. Putin's a killer. Trump says, oh, well, we have plenty of killers, too. And here is Katie Tour interviewing a senator. And listen to the question she asked. Senator, the junior senator in your state, uh, Senator Ben Sass, came up pretty strongly over the weekend uh, condemning Donald Trump's uh, assertion that we are just as bad uh, as Russia when he said that, you know, America does bad and terrible things, too, when Bill O'Reilly asked him if Vladimir Putin was a killer. Why? What is your sense of why this president is going above and beyond, bending over backwards, if you will, to... Stay away from criticizing the Russian president and, and to almost give him an excuse. As we know, there's since 2000 been a couple dozen suspicious deaths of journalists uh, in Russia who came out against the government there. Donald Trump has made no secret about going after journalists and, and his distaste for any news that doesn't agree with him here. Do you find that this is a dangerous path he's uh-huh. heading down? Trump, Trump is now assassinating journalists. They're asking. I mean, I mean, the journalists. They're running covers in Europe of Trump with a you know target on his head and running actual articles saying, "Should we? What do you think? Should let's discuss? Should we assassinate him?" But she's afraid that Trump is going to assassinate them. He doesn't have to assassinate him. They're shooting themselves in the foot every single day, and not only are they shooting themselves in the foot, their foot is in their mouth. So it's really dangerous. <laughs> it's just. It is just absolutely amazing. This the level of hysteria they have reached. And I just want to play, before we, we're going to have to cut away from Facebook, but before we do, I just want to play this very funny imitation of Sean Spicer, the spokesman Melissa McCarthy did on Saturday Night Live. And the reason I want to play it is this is what the media are seeing. This is what, I mean, this is what they see is happening to them. Here is Melissa McCarthy as Sean Spicer. So so this is what they hear. You know, they're like, we were just sitting here trying to destroy your administration, and now everybody's picking on us. What's going on? You know, 7%, the last number I heard, 7% of American journalists are Republicans. 7%. And still, when you ask them if they're biased, they're like, biased? 
what bias? They're tweeting, how do we bring this man down? How do we destroy this administration? And then they go on the air and go, in our objective report, here we are. You know, and they think they're, they think they're not biased. All right, we've got to say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube, but come on over to thedailywire.com. You can hear the rest if you subscribe. You can watch the rest, and you can get your question in the mailbag and turn your miserable existence around. Come on over. <laughs>